Funding for NJ Business Beat with Raven Santana provided by NJMEP, a partner to New Jersey's manufacturing industry, focused on productivity, performance, and strategic development. More on NJMEP.org. This is NJ Business Beat with Raven Santana. Hello, I'm Raven Santana. Thanks for joining me on NJ Business Beat. Newark's small businesses are propelling the city to new heights, and it's returning the favor with a new investment. At the end of 2023, Newark announced a retail reactivation initiative, a plan to help companies relocate downtown and fill vacant businesses, one of a number of initiatives aimed at supporting a growing downtown business sector. This week, we're highlighting Newark's economic vision as it seeks to expand its already unique business climate with a diverse group of small community-based businesses. I spoke with leaders from Newark's business, arts, and culture communities, including a one-on-one -on -one interview with Mayor Roz Baraka, where we discussed everything from the businesses he'd like to see move to Newark, his solutions for affordable housing, and whether he'll make a run for governor. So, Mayor, I remember a time when not everybody wanted to come to Newark. It was right. kind of scary, right? right? It got a bad rap. Driving in, there's a vegan restaurant across the street. Mm -hmm. Prudential is pulling in, major artists. Mm -hmm. There's development all over the city. Right. As someone who has lived here, taught here, you now have been the mayor since 2014, what are you most proud of when it comes to the business sector here in Newark? We're usually kind of defined by headlines and other issues right. and incidents that happen in the city. We have an incident and we're defined by that for the next 20 years. Right. Uh, but now people are engaging the city in different ways. They're coming to conferences, they're coming to shows, they're participating in ice skating rinks downtown, mm -hmm. they're going to the restaurants, uh, they're hearing uh, different kinds of headlines about what's happening in the city around the country. So it makes people pause a little bit and think about what's happening in that little town on the other side, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Hudson. So we we are uh, making our way here, and, and I'm, I'm proud of, of the change in that narrative. Audible is part of that progress. That's we know right. that it's, right, it's offering $250,000 for companies to relocate here right. to the city. Right. So tell me about that progress and what companies you would like to see come here? Audible has been working, working lockstep with us for some time uh, during the high buy, Hire by Live program where we asked corporations to hire Newark residents to buy, change their procurement uh, and purchase goods locally. Audible started giving stipends to their workers to buy food at lunchtime in Newark. When we had the, during the pandemic, they participated in Newark Working Kitchens and helped raise dollars mm -hmm. to pay restaurants to feed people who needed it during the pandemic. So as we're working after the pandemic to close some of these gaps uh, in retail that exist because businesses have left because of that, mm -hmm. uh, Audible again stepped up, steps up to the plate. And uh, obviously it also benefits them to put businesses in and around yes. the area where they are, but it also has a multiplying effect uh, because we are uh, extending that work down to, so, to the southern end of Broad Street uh, as well. Let's talk about affordable housing yeah. because that's part of changing that perspective. Um, most of the new uh, development has to include afford affordable housing. Yeah. Tell about how has that helped with this whole vision? Well, it's, it's, affordability is important. It's a, a national issue. It's a statewide issue. The lack of affordable housing, access to housing, period is a difficult issue, uh, you know, particularly in surrounding communities who have zoning ordinances that really don't allow people to come into their communities, makes cities like Newark more dense, mm -hmm. more densely populated. So more folks come uh, into our city, which means we need a variety and a diversity of housing. Do you feel that there's something for everyone here, even young professionals who maybe want to tier higher when it comes to right. Housing and that also impacts business here, right? Sure, a absolutely. We, we, I think it is, and I think we're working on expanding that. And I think there's a group of people like workforce housing, mm -hmm. folks that we just talked about, people who just came home from college who are trying to get jobs, and people who are starting out need affordability and they need good jobs. Uh, so, 
you know, we are working on creating a tech hub in the city, which, which is taking off and bringing jobs of that caliber to the city uh, and making the corporations begin to look at Newark residents uh, as uh, academics, as professionals, as folks right. that graduate from college, as degree holders that can take these jobs and then building the housing uh, where these folks can live. It's something I think that folks in the state don't think about mm -hmm. when they, uh, you know, when they oppose affordability, you know, they have this kind of prejudicial idea of what affordable housing is and who it's for. Uh, they're not thinking of their own children who are living in their basement or still in that room because they came home from college and can't find a place to live. It's interesting because it's just not develop development, it's arts and culture. Yeah. So when I think about, let's talk about the New York Symphony because that renovation is set to be completed soon. Um, and talk about how that's going to impact business here in Newark. That's a part of what, us trying to develop the southern end of Broad Street. I mean, on, if you go to the northern end, you have NJ Pack, you have the museum, you have the library, Harriet Tubman Square. So we just got $4 million, thanks to Senator Booker, Senator Menendez, to redo Lincoln Park. Uh, th that's going to happen. The remodeling of Symphony Hall and the developments that are happening down there will try to uh, rival the stuff that's happening on the northern end of Broad Street mm -hmm. to begin to make that happen down here, which begins to attract more folks to live in that community, more businesses to open up there. Uh, it, it improves the neighborhood, the life of folks uh, there, but it also does, does well for the economy in the city at the same time. I know that you have been a champion of making sure that black and brown businesses are a big part of this new development. Tell me about the status of that and, and for those watching, why they should set up shop here. We probably have more black and brown businesses downtown Newark per capita than any other city in the state of New Jersey. And people aren't doing the data on that and they should. And I would challenge any city to compare themselves to the amount of people of color that have businesses in their downtown corridors. We have two uh, major businesses that are coming from, from New York City, two huge restaurants, uh, Harlem-based restaurants that are coming here to Newark wow. uh, to be a part of the ecosystem that we're creating. Mayor, I have to be quite honest, this all sounds great, but wh where are people gonna park? Cause it, it took like 20 minutes for me to find park. Where, where is everyone gonna park? Hey, you know what's interesting? <laughs> I just, I just left a community Cause you got a parking spot. I, I had to fight for parking. I just left a community meeting last night and the people were complaining about the same thing. Mm. Our zoning ordinances that are changing that are allowing people to have businesses in their home. People are afraid that they're not going to find a place to park on their block. I mean, uh, I mean. Besides the fact of, of us trying to help people get a, additional income because it's mm -hmm. difficult. But you know what's interesting? More than 50% of the people in Newark don't even own a car. So it's, right, so it's mind boggling to me. Well, I try to figure out where all these cars are coming mm -hmm. from. I'm wondering, um, when, we, when we're speaking about <laughs> ventures, is this the last that we're going to hear of you, or are you going to run for governor? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess that's the, the talk of the entire state mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. Um, you know, right now I'm the mayor of Newark, and I'm happy with being the mayor of Newark. Okay. Uh, you know, doesn't mean I'm not thinking about it, or it's not in my mind, or, you know, it's not possible, that's for sure. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm not, like, uh, this overly ambitious guy that's saying, I've got to be the governor or else I'm going to explode. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I am doing a job that I am completely content with doing. I will say, Mayor, that you have accomplished a lot of things that people at one time had said that you couldn't do. And, and Newark has become a place to live, to work, and to play. Uh, and Let's see what else comes out of all this new development. I'm, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for this. I appreciate yeah, no it. Problem. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Newark's Ironbound neighborhood is rich with history. It is certainly known for its Portuguese and Spanish businesses, especially its world-class restaurants. But the Ironbound is still growing and welcoming new traditions while supporting the legacy of its community making it an ideal place to live, work, and play. I sat down with Vince Baglivo, Executive Director of the Ironbound Business Improvement District, to learn about how the Ironbound community balances tradition and new development. 
So we are at Sihana Cafe here in the Ironbound, one of the most famous areas here in Newark. And I have to say, it has been bustling since 9 a.m. this morning. I've seen firefighters. I have seen a council member. I have seen teenagers, women. It's just such a melting pot here. Is, is, really, is that what the Ironbound is? This community has been an immigrant's starting point in this country, in this state, uh, for hundreds and hundreds of years. Waves of immigrants from all over Europe, Central South America, all welcomed here to find a, a place to get a start, you know, build their dreams. And I think that kind of atmosphere it makes it feel welcoming to everybody that, uh, you know, those who came before me were welcomed with open arms. I'm coming now here in 2023 and I'm still being welcomed. I bring that up because I think that people automatically think Portuguese. But really, there's so many other influences, right? There, there's Brazilian, there's Spanish. Sure. We're sitting in an Albanian-owned restaurant right now. Sure, and you also have to understand the Portuguese diaspora as well. We have many people here who are Portuguese speaking, but they may be from Mozambique, from Angola. Um, so there's a lot of diversity within the Portuguese uh, you know, speaking world itself. But you're right, a lot of the property, a lot of the businesses are still Portuguese owned, but this is a very diverse neighborhood. Uh, more Ecuadorians live in the city of Newark in the Ironbound than almost any other place than Ecuador. Um, we have people from all uh, countries, of, of Uruguayans, Argentinians. We have Hondurans, Mexicans, Guatemalans, and they've all kind of just melded into what happens here, a community that has a lot of different faces, a lot of different voices, a lot of different sounds. So let's talk about development, because their investment has been everything mm -hmm. for this year. We talked a lot about that off camera. Yes. Tell me a little bit about what that has created here, not just for the community, but for business. There's tremendous investment in the city of Newark in general, but the location of the Ironbound, uh, located right at the gateway to Newark at Penn Station, um, minutes from Newark International Airport, the major highway networks. You know, the transportation nexus is, is a valuable, valuable thing for businesses, for residents, and we've seen developers come in from other places, from New York City, for example, looking for opportunity here. And uh, I think we're seeing the benefits of that in that um, you've got a lot of different people represented, different price points, if you will, in terms of what is available in the housing market, from very, very upscale units to more affordable things here. And affordable housing is one of the primary goals of, of our Mayor Raj J. Baraka. Um, so I think we're trying to strike a balance where there's a place for everyone. Tell me a little bit about, um, more about what that affordable housing really means, mm -hmm. and then why is there some pushback? The designation of a development zone near the, the train station, the transit hub, to me makes absolute sense because that's where people are trying to move between their jobs, their homes, as well as the recreational aspects here. Um, but what I would say to you is the city of Newark has a population of roughly 300,000. This city could easily welcome thousands and thousands and thousands of more residents and businesses as well. And the mayor and his administration are working in that way to incent people to do that. So, yes, there's going to be uh, concern over certain pieces of property and locations. As realtors always say, location, location, location. And Will some people find a place at exactly where they want to be at their price point? M maybe not, but there is a place for them in the city of Newark. The East Ward is the largest ward in the city of Newark uh, with the Ironbound, the airport, the seaport, or in the East Ward. But there's lots of housing here, um, from two-family homes and apartments to very upscale rental units that are coming online. Tell me a little bit about those two major projects going on here in the Ironbound, and not just affordable housing. There's other big things happening here. Many people who have some knowledge of the Ironbound in Newark are familiar with a restaurant called Iberia. Iconic for our neighborhood, has been around for decades and decades. That property was recently sold. It will be redeveloped. It will have thousands of units of residential housing. It will have retail. It will have restaurants. They are committed to designing a courtyard like you would find in Europe or 
South America to be an inviting place for people to gather. Blocks from Newark Penn Station, that's a transformative project. There's another project, 55 Union, uh, which is two blocks from Penn Station. Again, some of the most amazing views of the New York City skyline you will ever see, as well as the Newark skyline as well. High-end amenities, it's designed to, to entice people of looking for a certain living experience, and that's right here. At the same time, throughout our neighborhood, you're seeing development in smaller pieces of property. What may have been a two-family or a single-family home being redeveloped as a four-family unit, much more modern. Again, the Iron Bound was the immigrant's community, unlike some places that had very, very good housing stock to begin with. The Brownstones of Jersey City, for example, this was a poorer neighborhood, so the housing stock was needed to be upgraded and to be revitalized to, to meet current needs, demands, and what people expect from their housing, and that's happening. New York is a great place to be. Thank you so much for joining me. Pleasure. Great to have you here. One ironbound business that has thrived for years is Vinhas Jewelers, thanks in large part to its loyal customer base that has grown through generations. I visited Vinhas Jewelers and learned about the family-owned business, including some of the rare pieces that are imported and only sold here. Victor Vinhas is the owner, and he says he loves owning a business in the ironbound because of the diverse group of people who live and work in the neighborhood. Victor showed off one of the rare pieces in his store and explain how they've managed to keep customers business. Tell me what am I wearing and tell me a little bit about why your jewelry store is so so special. The piece you're wearing it's a, a handcrafted piece it's called filigree. We import it from Portugal it's all handmade uh, just a very few countries in the world that can manufacture filigree um, and it's just a, it's a, like a work of art. Each piece is unique, each piece is different. Our main goal is just to over-service our customers. Mm -hmm. Connect with our customers and, uh, and try to just build relationship with customers. We have customers that are second, third generation and it's a lot of referrals. So that's what we thrive. We just love working uh, with the community. Newark is also home to a growing arts, culture, and entertainment scene, and the epicenter of it all may be the Newark Museum of Art. It's the state's largest museum, and it's home to stunning art collections from all around the world. Now the museum is investing back into Newark with a housing and retail project right in its own backyard. I spoke to Linda Harrison, the museum's director, about this new project and how the museum is transforming the city arts industry. So Linda, we actually have met. I was here, I think when you first started for the Young Venture yes. Capitalists. Yes. And that was, that was, that was a huge event. Right, yes, right, 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 yes. right. And when I think yeah. back to then, I think about just the evolution of the cultural and economic impact of the museum. Tell me about that. That was um, a really uh, dynamic day, right. the full day of uh, new um, energy with um, entrepreneurs and startup businesses. And part of my vision was to have us really be engaged, much more engaged in the community. That was one of um, those events of the mm -hmm. museum, um, really being a part of the community, not just sitting in the community. And so this, this um, idea of economic um, impact, social impact, and cultural impact can actually coexist within an anchor institution that is a museum. You really are trying to immerse yourself in Newark. Um, and so yes. what have you seen since then? And how do you really um, provide that reach? People have an idea of what the museum is. And part of my wanting them to see that the museum is a vibrant, relevant place. This is why we changed the name from the Newark Museum to the Newark Museum of Art. Mm -hmm. This is why we said we're going to be an engaged anchor institution. And you, you tend to think of the mu museum as it was in the 20th century, which right. I was in the 20th century. <laughs> and here in the 21st century, you just got dressed mm -hmm. up and you came to the museum and you were very quiet. Right, right. We want that live interaction mm -hmm. and we want you to pause and stop and be a part of it. We want to hear what the community wants and how we can really be of value to the community. And part of that was 
we need to also be cognizant that we are a part of a transformational city. That's right. And this is one of the reasons why I came here. The mayor, uh, Mayor Baraka, is transforming this city. Mm -hmm. I was reading about that. And then you couple that with this is one of the coveted museums in the country. Our scholars know about us. The my colleagues at other museums know about us. They borrow from our extensive collections. But the everyday person walking around uh, Newark and through our parking lots did not. What would happen if this city, this area, this downtown, we contributed to uh, the building of housing that allowed for affordable housing and market rate housing? Well, talk about that. So what? <coughs> how much are we looking at? And how is that going to work? The good news is we're not displacing anyone to build this housing. Um, this is one of the things that I talked with the mayor about, that um, we want to have you live, work, and play in this hub. But we don't want to be the only hub. We want you to be able to walk, walk from here, walk over to NJ Pack, walk down to, what, Symphony Hall. We, we want to send the message that this is a safe place to live, it's a safe place to walk, and along the way, you're going to have all of these, um, I will say, cultural um, yeah. events. Not only are you living here, and you feel good about living here, and right. it's safe to live here, right. this helps drive the economic engine of the city and of the museum, but you also feel that you don't have to leave now this city in order to experience um, this sense of culture. Linda, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. I oh, appreciate it. Thank you. You've made this you so are inspiring wonderful. Thank you. so much. So many okay. people. Fashion also plays a major role in New Jersey's most populated city, and you can see it on display when window shopping down Halsey Street. One of the city's most well-known fashion designers is Marco Hall, who has designed amazing outfits for stars like Gabrielle Union and Rihanna. But despite his huge success, he says he still gains inspiration for his work through the city of Newark. I spoke to Marco at his studio about Newark's growing fashion scene and how the city inspires him. Well, Marco, tell me about your collection, your inspiration. When I'm designing, it stints on the fabric. The fabric tells the story. I like to lay fabric on the floor, look at it from the top, and it starts yeah. to build a story and tell me where I'm going. Tell me about the inspiration in Newark. I love the city. It gave me, it gave me room to grow as mm -hmm. a designer. It, it um, helped me hone my skill. Um, doing the local shows around here, watching the people. And again, I like the people watch. I love how people put things on. I love to watch how people put together a look to walk down the street. And I'm trying to figure out, like, what made you do that? And then if it if it touches me, I come back and, hmm. you know, find out how I can make it work. Your shop, as I'm looking around, you have beautiful pieces. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about what it's like to own a shop here. As a, what was it, What is it like to be a business owner um, especially in the fashion industry. Being a business owner here, it's really, it's challenging because, you know, I I find that, you know, you have to bring people into North. You know, you, it's bringing people into North. You know, the locals are here, they're not going away. They love it, and they love it just the way it is. So bringing new business and all stuff here um, is like just advertising, just pouring yourself into the world and making the world come and see us. And so right. that's what, you know, being a business owner here is about just like really just staying true and staying hardcore and really buckling down and making sure that you have great product, you have great business sense, just, and your community. And it's, for me, it's really about community. And I love being here on Hall Street. It's because we are community and we all help each other and mm -hmm. cross promote each other. So um, that's been the blessing here. You had pointed out that you really honed your skills here in Newark. I feel like in many ways you're creating a pathway for other uh, young men and women who, who may aspire to be at your level. You're bringing in celebrities here. Yeah. You know, you're showing that you can do something different. Mm. Do you feel that this is only the beginning? Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, um, 
every day is a learning curve. Every day is a teaching moment. Every mm -hmm. day, every day is a new day to challenge yourself and where you're going. And I love the fact that I have young kids come around every other day, knocking on the door, just asking questions, wanting to learn something, wanting to know. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot. Um, the boy, the kids at Brown Mill, who I I, I mentored um, before they became Brown Mill. So it's nice to see they're here and they're doing their thing on this block as well. Do you feel that? There, you you expect to see more inspiration here in Newark. Maybe more. Maybe there'll be bigger fashion shows here in Newark. I think Newark should definitely really partner with uh, a Prudential or Audible like Mercedes Benz Fashion Week okay. and become and find a real um, committee and hey, say let's do this the right way and really put on a real Fashion Week and do it like. Find a month, because, you know, everybody got a month. Find a month and really, like, make something magical um, happen. You know, so it's people have been trying to do it. Okay. But I think they, they haven't built the right team yet. If you want high fashion you and you want luxury, because this is quite the experience, yes. you come right here. Exactly. Marco, thank you so much You're for joining welcome. me. Thank you. You're this welcome. was wonderful. Thank and thank you. you for allowing me to wear no, this. Anytime. That does it for us this week. Remember to subscribe to our NJ Spotlight News YouTube channel to get alerted when we post new episodes and clips. I'm Raven Santana. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next weekend. Funding for NJ Business Beat with Raven Santana provided by NJMEP, a partner to New Jersey's manufacturing industry, focused on productivity, performance, and strategic development. More on NJMEP.org.